So I, I thought my being down there would somehow help in, and, and that I would make myself available in any way that I could. Here we were, here at the Trade Center side, just north of it, still waiting to be brought in. And uh, it was now 12, 13, 14 hours later, and we were just waiting to be brought in. Um, and I recall at that time, they came to us and they said, we still need your help, but we can't bring you in until it's more stabilized. So try to get home, try to get a few hours of sleep and then come back. And hopefully by that time, we'll have a better plan. But now, how could I sleep? I, I just couldn't sleep. There was, and this was maybe three in the morning, uh, I don't really remember time tables at that time, but I remember not being able to, now I had communicated via email and telephone calls to my loved ones and told them where I was and that I was fine, but I couldn't sleep. So I just decided to turn back around and go right back to the site. I, I had to be there. I had to be there. <laughs> and, uh, and I remember walking back to the site and waiting. And they finally had given me something that I could do. And that mobilization was helpful because now I could feel myself ready to do something. And they brought me and a small group of us to the lobby of the American Express building, which was right there at the site and there was chaos and confusion in the lobby. So I kind of wanted to mobilize the few of us that had been there and started to organize uh, a triage center or an aid center at the time right there in the lobby. There were no survivors up to that point. So the only care that was being given was to the emergency workers themselves and to the firefighters who were coming out of, out of the the, the, the pit itself. So, you know, so I spent several days there and then finally when I just couldn't stand anymore, uh, I started my walk back up to Chelsea.